Rub up your engines! Okay, I decided to get a lowrider! If you're gonna go all out, you might as well as go big and tall. I mean, really tall. And talk about a looker. These wheels cost $22,000. They're custom made. Check it out. Look at those spokes. It's unbelievable. Now, this started out life as a 48 Kenworth. It still is the original cab. And believe it or not, thanks to World War II, these things are made out of aluminum. So, it's not all rotted away. Good luck finding a steel cab. It'll be falling apart. These fuel tanks, 250 gallons, came out of a refill tank. He didn't have them custom built, but they really fit in with the style of the truck. And you might think, what good is a toy like this? Guess what? It's not a toy. He's got a gooseneck trailer. He uses this to pull his race cars. As you can see back in the day, the truckers had limited space. <laughs> this is the inside of the original cab. Now, everything else has changed. It does not have the original six cylinder engine in it. You can see aluminum doesn't rust. It's still perfectly clean. It's modernized with the Sony Android. <laughs> yeah, floorboards are long rotted away. These have all been done over too. Now the transmission isn't original either. This is a five speed standard transmission. Not one of those insane multi 18 speed 18 wheeler ones. It came out of a 91 Dodge and so did the engine. You can see out of the hood it's got a 91 Dodge six cylinder Cummings engine. And one thing I like about that, it's an old one. So what do we have here? We have a mechanical diesel injection system. These things can run forever. They don't need much maintenance. You might say, why don't they still make them that way? It costs too much money to make them. It's so much cheaper to make electronic controls of diesels. And that's why they've all gone to the electronics that, of course, Plastic parts are going to break. They can't take the pressure. These old mechanical ones are metal. Solid metal. True system that can run a really long time. The reason they don't make them anymore is because it costs too much money to make them that way. And of course, the modern systems being all computerized, they get somewhat better gas mileage. They can put out a little bit more horsepower. But if you've ever owned a diesel and it got old and the fuel injection system on a modern diesel started to go bad, you can spend money hand over fist. A lot of guys have no idea how to fix them. They just keep putting part after part after part. These. They're really simple to diagnose. You just bolt things on and bolt things off and they go bad. It really is a better system for long life. Since this came out of a 91 Dodge, it's got an alternator on it. You can see the belt there. Everything is out of a 91 Dodge. So, all you naysayers are going to say, but Scotty, you don't like Dodges. Well, back in 91, they built good vehicles. Plus, they didn't build this engine. Cummings did. This is a Cummings diesel engine. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that you can buy today that still have Cummings are good engines. Now you might say it's only a six cylinder engine, but it does have a turbo. How much can it tow? Well, with his trailer equipment hooked up to the gooseneck, he was pulling 20,000 pounds in it. He said it didn't like it. He could feel the strain, but it made it. All these tires, you're gonna have plenty of traction. That's no problem whatsoever. You can tow a lot with a diesel engine. That's what they're made for. Start it up here. Yes, it sounds like a diesel both at the front and the back. That's the only real disadvantage of mechanical fuel injection systems. They will have a tendency of running a little bit rich. That's why you saw all those old trucks going down the road, climbing out pills, accelerating with black coal smoke coming out of them. Just understand, this engine smokes a lot less than the original 48 did. I can guarantee you that. Now, it may look like a show truck. I'm sure it would win all kinds of things. And if there aren't any low rider 18 wheeler competitions, it would probably win that bouncing up and down. But for this guy, it's actually a work truck. He tows his race cars and stuff with it. He can tow a bunch with this giant trailer. Like I said, he was pulling 20,000 pounds. It was still going down the road. So, although it looks like a show truck, it's an actual working truck. As he said, he doesn't show it himself. And when you look, see, it's all stock. It's got the stock exhaust, cast iron. It works perfectly fine. I think it would be ruined if it was a show truck because then they'd have to plate everything and paint all the scratches. This is a real truck that people really drive it around and it makes it much more interesting. If you're ever modifying older vehicles, do what he did. Get yourself an aluminum multi-core radiator. It can take the heat and put an electric fan on. So let's take it for a ride. 
One solid old truck. No seat belts in this baby. So here we go down the road. We're nice and high up in the air. And yes, it's relatively loud, but you know, it started out as an 18 wheeler truck. Okay, I stand corrected. It still seems high to me, but <laughs> he didn't lower this quite a bit. Now I've been in 18 wheeler trucks before they rode like crap. This one doesn't. Why not? Because he has these Firestone airbag system in it, and he figures out how to fill them up. He can make it ride almost like a Cadillac by only filling them halfway. This is not the stock suspension, to say the least. Here we go, down the road. No hands, but it goes straight as an arrow. Look at that. So, it looks like a toy, right? It does. It looks like a giant toy. I had something like this when I was a kid, you know? It's not a toy. It's a real working truck. That's what interests me in it. But of course, sadly, I did not own this truck. But the man who owns this truck says everything is for sale. It would come with a custom-made trailer that he made just for that. It wouldn't fit anything else. Perhaps you just have to have this thing. You can always contact him. You never know. <laughs> he loves this truck, but he also loves money. So who knows what will become of this truck. And here he is. Renegade Racing. Renegade Racing Performance. You got any questions? He loves talking to people. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Rosie Artis says, my car's haunted. HR got a new clutch put in. When at a stop sign, the wipers turn on by themselves. The car dies immediately. Does it over and over. All right, yeah, I'll give you some help. Take it back to the idiots who put the clutch in and make them fix it right. When you put a clutch in a car, you have to pull the transmission off the engine. It's kind of like open heart surgery. There's so much crap that has to be taken off to get the transmission off. Wires, sensors, you name it. They obviously screwed something off and shorted it out. Now, I had a guy get a car like that once. He brought it to me, and I found out what happened was they took the transmission off, put a clutch in. When they put it back on, there's all those wires hanging around. They pinched the wires, and then the wires were shortened out, either against the transmission or the engine or amongst themselves when they got squashed. You obviously have a short that's turning on the wipers and then it's shorting the whole system and making it die. Take it back to the idiots that did work and make them fix it. They screwed it up. They did something wrong. If I were you, get a camera. Take pictures all around the engine and transmission where they bolt together. And you show it to any mechanic, they can say, hey, look, the wires are crushed in there. The idiots crushed the wires when they did the work. You got it back and it started doing it. They obviously did something to the wiring system. Pulling a tranny is a big job and it could screw up in a thousand different ways. Lute says, I want to add two turbos and a supercharger to my 2000 Navigator. I want a twin turbo supercharge my 2000 Navigator with the 32V Intech V8 engine. Do you think it's possible to do? Anything's possible to do if you really want to. I mean, a supercharger and turbos. Back at the end of World War II, they had B-17 bombers that had both superchargers and turbochargers on them because they had to carry giant bomb loads up in the air where there's hardly any air and they wanted to ram as much air as they could, right? You can. Now, it's a 2000 Navigator. What kind of shape is your engine in? If your engine is worn, it'll blow the engine up. You'd have to redo the engine too. And it's going to cost you a fortune to do it. But anything is doable. You can do all kinds of things. I saw a guy down the street here. He has a Honda Civic. And he put a 427 V8 engine in it. You think, how could anybody do it? Well, he did. You could do anything if you want to spend the time and the money to do it. <laughs> But be wary, if you actually did that, you'd have to do the engine over, because if you didn't, very soon after, the engine would explode from all that extra pressure. Well, here's yet another reason not to go to New York City. They have what they call a proposed central business tolling program. And the toll prices for various areas cost various amounts of money. And the most costly one, if you ended one of these congested zones, cost you 23 bucks to get in there. <laughs> And hilariously enough, where are they going to send this money? They're going to send 80% of it to the subway system. So they're taxing the people in cars to fix their crumbling New York subways. It's like they're patching everything together. The ship is sinking and they're rearranging the chairs on the deck. We'll tax those cars as much as we can to try to fix our subway system. I always laugh because people always say to me, oh yeah, I, I live in a city. Nobody has cars in New York City. Did you ever go to New York City? Cars everywhere. It's just jam-packed full of cars. <laughs> I always find the irony of them saying, oh yeah, nobody's got a car here. Well, somebody's got a car there because every time I've been there, there's cars all over the place, jammed every place they could possibly be. <laughs> so a little hypocrisy there. They're going to be taxing the cars to pay for their subway system that's falling apart. Maybe 
maybe eventually the whole thing will fall apart. I don't know. But just adding more taxes, the typical way they do it in New York State, tax everybody, tax, 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 tax. And then, of course, government-run subways, so I'm sure there's all kinds of corruption and that money's wasted all over the place. If you're planning on visiting New York City in the future, if all this stuff goes through, I'd say fly there and take an Uber or something, let somebody else pay the tax. But, of course, then you're just going to pay the tax because the Uber guy's got to pay the tax, so then you're going to have to pay him more because he's paying the tax. That's the thing about tax. It just keeps going and going and growing and growing and everybody pays for it and they don't get much out of it in the first place. So my advice is just stay away from there. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.